So science can never affirm directly or deny directly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it can only address that which observations can solve. For it now to start discussing the existence of Allah, it's outside of its methodology. It's like having two rooms. I know what's in this room, but I don't know what's in the next room. And just because I see a carpet in this room, I cannot conclude logically, therefore, there is no carpet in the other room. So if you claim to be a scientist and you claim to deny God based on science, it's equivalent of having two rooms. You don't know what's in the other room. You're in one room. And just because you can see a carpet in this room, you now conclude there's, there's no carpet in the next room. This is a logical fallacy. There is no logical leap. It doesn't follow. It's non sequitur, meaning it doesn't logically follow. And this is why I think it was Hugh Goat. He says, to basically suggest that science supports atheism, you get high marks for enthusiasm, low marks for logic, right? And any sincere academic science scientist, go, go to Qatar Foundation, go to Education City, go to Oxford, go to Cambridge, ask a sincere scientist and a philosophy of science, a philosopher of science, and ask them, can science ever directly deny God? No, it can't, because it's a metaphysical concept. Nothing which you observe can deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what science can do is a few things. Number one, stay silent on the topic. Or number two, maybe suggest evidence that you can use to infer that there is a de there's a designer. But it can't directly deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who knows their science, anyone who knows the philosophy of science can never deny God no matter what they say. You had some guy, I think he's in Victor Stenger, I think that's his name. He wrote a book, God the Failed Hypothesis, how science disproves God or something. It's a ridiculous book. Science can never deny God. All it can do is maybe suggest alternative models to explain how creation developed. But that's a different story, right? That's denying a creation story. That's denying how species were evolved or affirming a different kind of narrative or different theory for how species evolved. That's a different discussion. But to outright deny a creator for the universe, this is impossible. Science can't deal with that at all. And when you study, for example, the inductive model or induction, which moves from a limited set of observations and concludes for the general, you see that there's always a potential observation or a future observation or another observation that could deny previous conclusions. So even if science were to say, this is our conclusion, a scientific fact doesn't mean fact with big F, right? It's a small f, italics. Because there's always a possibility of another observation to deny previous conclusions. And we've seen this in the history of science. We even see this now. There was Last year, there were challenges by some cosmologists that were saying the universe now didn't have a beginning. They're changing their mind again. Other scientists said, well, actually, maybe the universe is not expanding anymore. These are discussions in academia based on different theoretical models, different pieces of evidence that they find, right? This is the, the beauty of science, it's supposed to change. So even if they were to make such a conclusion, it's not a certain fact, because there's, there's a possibility it can change. So that's the intellectual doubts. So science can never really doubt the foundations of Islam, which is that Allah exists and that He deserves to be worshipped. These are spiritual, rational truths. They're not based on the touch and feel. And things that you touch and feel are there to awaken the fact that there is a wisdom behind the universe. Because you know the interesting thing is, even if the science changes, it always assumes there is power and wisdom behind it. Right? Because for science to work, you have to trust your mind and you have to believe that, this, that the universe can be rationalized. That the universe can be conceived. Like Einstein said, what's inconceivable out of the universe is that the universe can be conceived. Is that you can understand the universe. Right? So you have to always assume that there is some form of wisdom behind the universe or, and some form of creative power. They could never deny this. So even if you change your scientific theory, the fundamentals always re remain. There is a wisdom and a power in the universe, which awakens the fitra to bring about the truth that Allah deserves to be worshipped. Make sense? So bring on the science, bring us any theory. Even if they contradict, they're always going to assume a power and a wisdom. Always. Bring any theory. There are 17 different models for the Big Bang. Ahlan wa sahlan. Bring them on. They're going to assume there's a power and they're going to assume there's some kind of wisdom. 
خلاص. No matter what theory you have. And that's what the Quran was to get to. The fundamental, the basis. The fundamental intellectual driving force that there is a creative power and wisdom behind the universe and therefore it awakens your fitrah and brings about the self-evident truth that Allah deserves to be worshipped.